you call it. You, you, you call it. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is preventing overweight babies. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about uh, preventing overweight babies, uh, Dr. Flora Ukoli, uh, who is from Meharry Medical College. And she has quite a bit of information in reference to not only preventing overweight babies, but obesity in children and similar kinds of information. But before we get started, Dr. Okoli, let's see if we could give, have you to give us some information about your background, your education, and your experiences, and some of the things that were important in terms of eventually bringing you to us this morning. And then we'll get into other topics. Thank you, Dr. Haney. I went to high school in Nigeria. Uh, I was in a boarding school. It was an Anglican girls boarding school. And in that school, I was able to take part in athletics, basketball, hockey, you do whatever you want to do. And I was a very good sports girl, but at the same time, I was good in class. Mm -hmm. But I thought I wanted to be a sports teacher. Actually, at one time, I thought I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> but I know my teacher then was saying, well, you know, dancing, sometimes you might not get a job. I think you should think of something else where you can get a job. So I said, okay, I'll be a maths teacher. So I was thinking of becoming a maths teacher. Mm -hmm. But when it came to the time for us to apply to colleges, my father started talking about medicine. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I don't like medicine. It's sick people, blood. No, I don't want medicine. But he kept saying, well, you know, you're a girl. Girls don't do engineering. Girls don't do stuff like, girls do nursing or medicine. And he was talking me into it, but at the end, when I was applying to college, I applied to three colleges. So I applied to one for medicine, the second one for mathematics, and the third one for engineering. But uh, at a point in time when the letters of admission began to show up, my father showed me the one from the medical school. And I was admitted and I was happy and I didn't even ask about the other ones and I went to medical school. So I had my initial medical training in Nigeria. And in Nigeria, we run the British system, which means you go to medical school straight from high school. So I was about 18 when I went into 
medical school. No college, then medical school no, directly? No, you go straight into mm -hmm. medical school and you spend six years. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have advanced level, mm -hmm. advanced high school, but mm -hmm. if you had ordinary level, five mm -hmm. years of high school, then you have six years in the university. Mm -hmm. So I had five years in college because I already had two years of post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. So then I was doing medicine like everybody else. And in Nigeria, medical school is two years preclinical and then three years clinical. And when you finish and you have your medical degree, you're going to go into junior residency. Junior residency means you're going to rotate through all the major specialties as a little doctor working under supervision. And during that time, you go through surgery, internal medicine, pediatrics, and OBGYN. And at that time, I began to realize that medicine was not a joke. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be in medicine, mm -hmm. you'll be awake all night. Mm -hmm. People give birth to babies at night. Mm -hmm. People fall ill at night, and they'll call you, and they'll wake you up. And I started to look for the easy way out. And I realized that there was something called public health. Uh, in Nigeria, we have, we call it public health, we call it community medicine. And I decided to go into community medicine because that is the specialty where you prevent things from happening. And I was thinking that if people can prevent all these things, why do they wait until they fall ill? So I became, I went into preventive medicine. So by 1979, I think, I went to Glasgow in Scotland and I had my master's degree in public health. So my medical degree is from Nigeria, my public health degree is from Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to Nigeria and I was involved in numerous World Health Organization programs that have to do with prevention. For example, I was involved in the expanded program of immunization where we had to try and immunize all children mm -hmm. against the six deadly childhood diseases. Mm -hmm. That's measles and whooping cough and stuff like that. So I was doing that. I was also a uh, director, program director for what we call the primary health care program. Mm -hmm. Primary health care is supposed to be a program where everybody sees a primary health care doctor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you cannot go to a specialist unless you're referred. Mm -hmm. So we have these little clinics in villages, we have little clinics here and there, and I did primary health care for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, while I was doing all of this, I was doing it in a teaching hospital. Mm -hmm. So I had to teach. Very good. Doctor, let me uh, interrupt here for our first commercial break, yes. and then we'll pick up when we uh, come back. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Flora Okoli, who is uh, at Meharry Medical College, and the topic is preventing overweight uh, babies. Uh, Dr. Okoli, uh, we started off by getting some information in reference to your background and experiences and et cetera. Let's pick up at that point and bring yourself to uh, Meharry Medical College, and then we'll get into preventing overweight uh, babies from that perspective during the second So segment. right there in the university in Nigeria, some people from Pittsburgh University wanted to do research looking at blood pressure, hypertension in black people. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to compare Nigerians with African-Americans. So that's how I got into research. Mm -hmm. So they came to my university and I started working with them. And after nine years, they invited me to Pittsburgh University for one year mm -hmm. to do a master's program in epidemiology. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to the US. Mm -hmm. So I did epidemiology and now I'm doing research, mm -hmm. looking at blood pressure, looking at diet, mm -hmm. looking at all kinds of things that cause problem for people. Mm -hmm. So after the master's program, I worked at Howard University for mm -hmm. five years, mm -hmm. and I was running the prostate cancer screening program mm -hmm. and the prostate cancer prevention, dietary mm -hmm. risk factor mm -hmm. prevention program. And I was there for five years. Mm -hmm. And after that, 
I came to Meharry because I was going to come and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So here at Meharry in Nashville, I've been working on prostate cancer for eight years. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on prostate cancer. I still do prostate cancer education. Mm -hmm. But then I always think of the children mm -hmm. and the babies that I used to work with. Mm -hmm. And here in America, I've noticed, I noticed women don't breastfeed. Mm -hmm. I also noticed that Babies are big. I see babies and I think they are three months old and I'm told that they are one month old. Mm -hmm. I see some babies, I think they are just a whole year old and I hear mm -hmm. that they are three months old. I said, these babies are big. Mm -hmm. So then I started to realize that it's because they were not breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. They were using formula. Mm -hmm. So I decided to write a grant. It was first a pilot grant mm -hmm. and it was funded by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation a little grant to just look at the level of knowledge mm -hmm. among women, mm -hmm. African-American women, about the kinds of food they should be giving to their babies. Mm -hmm. And so with that pilot project, I saw that many women did not realize that sugar, candy, juice, and whole milk was not really good for babies. Mm -hmm. Most women did not even realize that breast milk was superior to formula. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that. So after the pilot project, I now wrote another grant mm -hmm. and I got funded by the department, well, by the centers mm -hmm. for Medicare and Medicaid services. Mm -hmm. And that program gave me enough money to educate 350 pregnant women mm -hmm. and to talk to them about breastfeeding and to talk to them about how they can prevent their baby from being obese. Mm -hmm. Now, why are we trying to prevent babies from being obese? Mm -hmm. Because everybody likes the bouncing baby boy, mm -hmm. the bouncing round cheek little baby girl. We all like them to be big, mm -hmm. but big babies will grow up to be- Create big, big problems. Big preschool mm -hmm. children. They're gonna be big high school children. They're gonna be obese adults. And then all this problem, we have a lot of problems that go with obesity. Mm -hmm. For example, hypertension is one of them. Hypercholesterol, that is high lip cholesterol in the blood, comes from obesity. Mm -hmm. We have heart disease related to obesity. Mm -hmm. All that will happen in the future mm -hmm. if you don't stop obesity mm -hmm. now. But even in the babies, a big baby has problems. One problem is they are not as agile mm -hmm. as a baby that's not big. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't move, move. It, they, they don't roll quickly, they don't move well. And so they have the opportunity of, their milestones are a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. Then you see the big babies, if they are that big, they have acid reflux. Mm -hmm. They do get acid reflux quite easily. And big babies also have a nappy rash more quickly than mm -hmm. smaller babies. And they have candida around their neck mm -hmm. under the folds and uh, the story of sudden infant death syndrome, mm -hmm. we don't know the exact cause of all of that, but it has to do with problem, sleep problem, breathing problem, and this type of things might be higher in children that are a little bit too big for their age. So now I'm not talking about, we know that there are other factors in sudden infant death syndrome. We know that blankets and the or crib, some uh -huh. crib and things like that mm -hmm. can lead to it. But if the baby's a little bit too big, mm -hmm. he's not as agile mm -hmm. as the one that's smaller. So that is why we want to prevent obesity. Mm -hmm. We want to prevent obesity in the baby mm -hmm. for now, and we also want to prevent obesity in the baby to prevent obesity mm -hmm. in the future, which has so many health risks. Mm -hmm. How many, it seems that you're sort of breaking uh, a pathway toward uh, some things people never thought of in, in terms of the size of these babies. Generally, we, when we talk about obesity in children, we get them uh, when they are two or three years old and they're exactly. getting, but, but what you're saying is that the very, very factor of the way they are fed has quite a bit to do with it. And you think that yes. breastfeeding has, it has. Oh yes, because you see, when a newborn baby does not pick what they want to eat. They don't know what they like. They don't have a choice. They take what they are given. Mm -hmm. And the natural choice is breastfeeding, mm -hmm. breast milk. And I don't know if you've ever tasted breast milk, mm -hmm. but breast milk is bland. Mm -hmm. It's not sweet. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's not sweet. It's just bland. The light. And, and it's light. Mm -hmm. and, there's, and it's created. Each, mm -hmm. each breast, uh, each mother produces the exact kind of milk that is suitable for, for her For the own baby, baby, because she's been carrying yes. the baby for nine and months. All the immunity, mm -hmm. all the antibodies in the mother are in the milk, and mm -hmm. it's all transferred to that baby. So the immunity that I will give to my own baby might be a little bit different from the immunity another mother will give to her own baby, depending on the infections that mm -hmm. she has come across. Mm -hmm. So the breastfeeding is supposed to be the answer, is the natural food for the baby. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we have something competing with breast milk, mm -hmm. and that is formula. Mm -hmm. Formula is competing with breast milk, mm -hmm. and formula is advertised, mm -hmm. is aggressively promoted, mm -hmm. is pushed everywhere. In fact, it has been pushed for over a hundred years mm -hmm. to the point where many people have forgotten about that breast, breast milk uh -huh. is superior uh -huh. to formula. Uh -huh. And that is why I decided that this is a program I have to carry out with, with, with a lot of passion because I can see that most women do not know. Okay, very good. And Doctor, know. we're going to take our second commercial break. And when we come, <coughs> excuse me, when we come back, we want to give you the uh, final segment to uh, talk about some of the things that you think that we ought to know in reference to preventing uh, high weight uh, uh, babies. And, okay. and of course, we'll be back with our audience uh, following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. O'Coli, and she's given us some information about preventing birth weight, high birth weight among babies. And Dr. O'Coli, let me uh, give you an opportunity during this last segment to uh, simply inform the audience in reference to uh, some of the issues uh, dealing with uh, overweight babies and uh, formulas and all of that, all of the kind of things that you think that they ought to know uh, in order to have a successful uh, pregnancy as well as uh, a successful uh, birth weight in dealing with babies? So um, I will just say that I'm going to talk about two things. Mm -hmm. The first one is that this program, my program, was developed along the line of the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, mm -hmm. which was launched by the World Health Organization in 1990. So it's about 30 years mm -hmm. ago. In that program, they expected the hospitals to take the lead and to encourage women, support women, and give them all they need to breastfeed Speed. and to avoid formula altogether in the first six months of life. Mm -hmm. That is what they call exclusive. At least the first six the months. The first six months of life is supposed to be exclusive breastfeeding because you don't want to introduce any other thing. You don't want to give the child another taste you don't want them to taste any other thing but breast milk mm -hmm. the first six months. And then the other thing is that the government and society in general was supposed to support women to do that mm -hmm. because you cannot exclusively breastfeed a child if you don't have support. Mm -hmm. And what is the support I'm talking about? One support is you shouldn't be working. You should be at home. At but least that first six, six months. Six months. But how are you going to be at home if you don't get paid maternity leave. Every single country on earth, except for three countries, including the US, do not give women paid maternity leave. If you, the UK or Germany, France, all these countries, they and give a whole year. And all of that has to do with the health of the child yes. itself, because by, yes. by staying at home and breastfeeding. If the woman the stays at home, home, she can breastfeed fully for the first six months of life. Mm -hmm. But you have to support her mm -hmm. by giving her paid maternity leave. Mm -hmm. So that is important. The second thing is that most people 
have forgotten that the breast was designed for the baby, human milk was designed for human baby, <laughs> and there's no need trying to create a human milk substitute mm -hmm. that will always be substandard. Mm -hmm. For one, it contains the wrong amount of calories, too much calories, that's why the babies blow up. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it allows the baby to eat too much because you're feeding the baby from a bottle mm -hmm. and you are trying to make the baby finish whatever you want the baby to finish. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if the child was, if the baby was on the breast, they self-regulate, mm -hmm. they suck and they stop. Mm -hmm. In fact, the breast will produce just the right quantity of milk for the baby. Mm -hmm. But so this program we have, we're trying to educate women, let them understand that their baby comes first. Mm -hmm. We try to explain to them that the best thing they can do for their baby is to stay at home with mm -hmm. the baby. And I know it's difficult, especially if you're not going to be supported. Mm -hmm. So the government needs to think about this. Rather than giving people f formula, mm -hmm. you know, give them paid maternity leave. Now, that's, you, you were saying that that would be cost effective yes. <coughs> in the long run because yes. by simply having the mother stay there with the child for at least six months, she will have a healthier child and he will have fewer diseases and et cetera and et cetera. And so in the real sense, yes. <coughs> that is uh, cost effective. Yes. I was actually reading an article that mentioned up to $90 million saved, cost saving, for, you know, in, in cash by just breastfeeding so that it, because if you breastfeed the baby, they have less infection, less ear infection, less respiratory tract infection. They have so many things that will go right for that baby that they don't have to go to hospital all the time. And then you save money if you do that. And then the mother, they will bond with the baby. There's psychological, a lot of psychological benefits mm -hmm. for the baby especially and also for the mother mm -hmm. if they are able to stay together and bond mm -hmm. together. And so this program has been designed in such a way that we encourage women to come and get four education sessions for free. Mm -hmm. We talk to them about obesity in babies and why it is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We talk to them about breast milk and formula. We compare the two and we encourage them mm -hmm. to try and do what we are doing. Knowing fully well that several hospitals do not promote breastfeeding. Oh, yeah. They may pay <clears throat> lip mm -hmm. service to promote, they... but in action, there mm -hmm. are certain hospital routines that discourage breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Take, for example, if you have a baby born right now, you're supposed to put the baby to the mother's breast within 30 minutes mm -hmm. and let the baby suck. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to take the baby away from the mother. Mm -hmm. And why do we say that? Because if a baby is born, is kept on the mother's bosom, the baby will find the nipple mm -hmm. and latch by him or herself. That's natural. It's natural. Mm -hmm. And that will send a message to the brain to do what we call the letdown reflex mm -hmm. that will tell the breast that, oh, there's a baby. baby there. And mm -hmm. this <clears throat> will make the woman lactate. Mm -hmm. Like she can hear the baby. She can see the baby beside her. She can smell the baby. Mm -hmm. She can smell the baby. All her senses will be stimulated to make the breast produce enough milk mm -hmm. for the baby. But if you take the baby away, or if you use too much painkillers on the mother, mm -hmm. those are all the kind of things that will dull the reflex mm -hmm. and the breast will like go in to sleep mm -hmm. and might not produce, produce the mm -hmm. milk that it was supposed to produce mm -hmm. because it, it, it was not stimulated enough. And also there are some things that people do. When a woman has a baby today, she's only going to produce colostrum, mm -hmm. what we call colostrum, a few drops at a time. She's not going to produce milk, mm -hmm. but sometimes in the hospital, some people will show the mother and convince her that your breast is not producing milk. Mm -hmm. So let's give your baby formula. And they end up with the formula. Yes, but <coughs> the breast was not supposed to produce mm -hmm. milk on the first day. It was supposed to produce drops of brownish, light brown colostrum, which is highly concentrated, high calorie, high antibodies and everything. That's all the baby needs. And in physicians the first day. act as if they don't know that. Is that <coughs> I, I believe that physicians know a little bit about breastfeeding, but in the last 40, mm -hmm. 30 years, 
breastfeeding has been removed from the curriculum. Mm -hmm. They might, in the medical school, in the nursing school, they might mention breast milk mm -hmm. and then go on and talk about mm -hmm. formula. Mm -hmm. But now we have people called certified lactation consultants mm -hmm. in the hospital. They are trained. They are trained to give proper and full breastfeeding mm -hmm. education. But that's not enough. We want every doctor and every nurse mm -hmm. to be trained. Everybody, mm -hmm. not just a few. And so in my program, I try to talk to these mothers and I tell them, make sure you tell your doctor you want mm -hmm. to breastfeed so that they will refer you to the lactation consultant mm -hmm. so that you will know all there is to know about breastfeeding your baby. Now, what if somebody would like to know more about uh, what you're doing, doctor, in terms of your research and your program and et cetera? Uh, what, what can you leave with us this morning in reference well, to how they could get in touch with you? I have a phone number. Mm -hmm. They can call us at 615 mm -hmm. 327-5670. Or they can get in touch with you at Meharry Medical yes, College. Yes, I'm right there at Meharry if they mm. ask for mm. Dr. Ukoli. And they mm. say the, the pregnant breast, women, yeah, the breastfeeding <laughs> pregnant baby woman, woman. Yes, <laughs> but, program uh -huh. get to me. We, uh -huh. So I'm, I'm right there. But, and, and so you truly believe that this can really change the lives of mothers it will, and children? Because because I was there in Nigeria when we started the Baby Friendly Initiative in 1990. Mm -hmm. And it was like night and day. One day we were not mm -hmm. breastfeeding and the next day we were breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. The whole country. Mm -hmm. Because we became baby friendly. Mm -hmm. in 1990. And so that's Nigeria now in terms of baby Nigeria and, and many, 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 many other mm -hmm. countries. America is becoming baby friendly from about six years ago. Mm -hmm. And in Nashville, a few hospitals are now baby friendly. Mm -hmm. Two hospitals mm -hmm. are Very baby good. friendly. Very good. And Dr. Okoli, let me, uh, well, thank you for coming by and giving us that excellent information in reference <laughs> to uh, preventing overweight uh, babies. And I think that it goes a long way in terms of helping to deal with many of the uh, problems that we have dealing with infant health.